Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about bags that don't hold their value. I've done a few videos on resale and investment bags before, but today this is still the most common topic that I get asked about. So whereas the previous videos were more focusing in on the bags that do hold their value really well, today I'm specifically focusing in on bags which don't hold their value and trying to give specific examples where I can, because I do kind of feel like there's a bit of a formula and seasoned handbag buyers will be very familiar with this kind of knowledge and way of thinking but obviously if you're new to luxury shopping then it can be very confusing about what is considered an investment bag which brands are good which models within those brands so today I thought I would try and lay it out in the best way I can so hopefully you'll enjoy and find it useful and let's get started so I'm going in order of the worst defenders, and by worst defenders I mean those which are both very expensive and also don't hold their value because it's one thing to spend £300 or dollars on a bag and not get your money back if you wanted to sell it, but it's quite another to be spending 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 and above. So I'm going to be going in order of the most expensive ones, so the higher stake ones, right through to contemporary line as well. I also wanted to put a little disclaim in about buying what you love. Obviously this video is solely focused on resale value, but I'm a firm believer that you should always buy what you love, regardless of other factors. I absolutely like to look at resale value when making my bag buying decisions, but even then I have bought and owned many bags which I know won't have good resale value, I've done that because I just really love the bag and I know I'm going to enjoy it so it definitely doesn't paint the full picture and I'm a firm believer that the biggest factor is if you love it. So first up is Chanel and many people will think of Chanel as one of the best if not the best bag brand to buy in terms of resale value. Not only do they have very frequent price increases but they're also very very popular on the resale market due to the fact that they don't change the style of their classic lines very much. That said, even though their classic flaps have amazing resale value, their other bags don't have such good resale value. And here I'm really talking about their seasonal bags or even their annual collections. So they have many bags in addition to their classic flaps, which they release on a seasonal basis. And a lot of these don't even have kind of well-known names. They'll just be general seasonal models that they'll put out there. One example that I do have, and I don't own many seasonal bags from Chanel, but one that I do own is the DeVille Tote. And again, many people would even think of this as a classic. It's not considered a classic from Chanel, and I imagine once it stops selling so well, they will stop producing it. And this is a good example of a bag which probably isn't going to hold its value that well. The only thing that kind of protects something like this from having terrible resale value is the fact that it's a very popular shape. So it is a tote bag, and generally speaking, classic styles and shapes will still do a little bit better than kind of more unusual shapes. But even so, I don't anticipate this to be worth a ton of money in about 10 years time. Every single season, Chanel will release a wide array of different bag styles in addition to their classic flaps. But every now and then, they will also do a big, larger release behind one particular bag style. So at the moment, that is the Gabrielle bag style. A few years ago, it was the boy bag when it was first released. Obviously, the boy bag is still in circulation and still very popular. A few years before that, it was the Mademoiselle line of bags, which was fronted by Blake Lively. All of those bag releases were kind of the same in the sense that it was a new bag style. Chanel put a lot of resources and marketing spend into launching it, but they had very different outcomes. So I have my boy bag here, which is still very, very popular. They still release it in a lot of different colors and fabrics, and I can't imagine that they're going to stop anytime soon. But if you contrast this to the Mademoiselle bag, that was also very popular when it first launched, but then its popularity really quickly fizzled, and they stopped producing it fairly soon after. I do think that the Gabrielle line is going to go more of the way of the Mademoiselle line than the boy bag styles, but only time will tell. Generally speaking though, I would say that the boy bag is the exception rather than the rule. Usually speaking, the kind of seasonal bags that Chanel do don't hold their value very well. And even then, I don't imagine that the boy bag's value is going to be as strong in 10 years time as it is now. Again, only time will tell, but if you're looking for a sure thing, I would definitely say to look at the classic flaps, maybe the minis as well, but always stay away from these seasonal lines if you want something that's going to have stellar resale value in 10 years time. 
My next worst offender are Hermes bags. Now, obviously everyone is very familiar with the Hermes styles, the Birkin and the Kelly, which continue to have absolutely amazing resale value due to the fact that they are so difficult to find and buy. And I don't imagine anything changing with that. I also think that a few of their other styles will continue to have amazing resale value, such as the Constance and a couple of their other styles. But Hermes, just like Chanel, do a ton of different bag styles. And really, unless they're those few models, they will not have good resale value. And they're also very, very expensive. So if you're looking at Hermes, and this is easy to say, but the Birkin and the Kelly is the obvious choice. Maybe the Constance if you like that style as well. But even if you look at the Hermes website, and I'm on it now, they do so many different bag styles, which really aren't very well known at all. And how well known a bag style is really is an indicator of how well it will do on the resale market. Now, obviously any bag style has the potential to become very popular, but let's face it, the vast majority of bag styles don't become as popular and iconic as the Birkin or the Kelly. So if you are looking at spending this much money on an Hermes bag and all the ones I'm looking at on the website right now are three and a half thousand pounds plus, a lot of them are six, seven thousand pounds, still extremely expensive bags, but they will not hold their value in the resale market anywhere near as well as a Birkin or a Kelly does. So definitely something to keep in mind that just because it comes from Chanel or Hermes doesn't automatically mean it's going to have great resale value. And coming in at number three on my worst defenders list is Louis Vuitton. I'm rounding off my little trio of luxury bag brands, but Louis Vuitton is also up there, but to a lesser degree than Hermes and Chanel, just because the price points are typically lower. The worst defenders come in two categories for me for Louis Vuitton. The first one is leather styles, which typically don't do as well on the resale market as their canvas styles, and also whether the bags are going to be discontinued or not. So going back to the first one, leather bags, even though Louis Vuitton does many beautiful leather styles, and again, you'll always be able to find exceptions to every rule, but generally speaking, the leather bags from Louis Vuitton are not only priced a lot higher, so sometimes they're looking at double, triple, sometimes even four times as much as some of their canvas styles, but they also seem to fare a lot worse on the resale market. And I'm not fully sure why that is. I think maybe just Louis Vuitton haven't quite hit their stride yet with their leather styles, but they don't ever seem to do that well. And even looking at some of the most beautiful and popular bags, such as the Cappuccino bag, if you look on the resale market, they are selling for a lot less than retail, which typically isn't a good sign for a bag that's still available to buy. So generally speaking, I'd say if you're really concerned about resale value, I would probably stay away from the leather styles from Louis Vuitton or otherwise just looking at buying them pre-loved initially so you minimize your losses. The second aspect to consider is whether the bag will be discontinued. Now there are exceptions to this as with everything that I'm talking about and one well, big exception that springs to mind is the watercolor speedy which was a limited edition collection super popular and even now so many years later they still go for very very good prices online but most of the time that doesn't happen. So if a bag style is being discontinued and you are looking at it and you are concerned about resale value, I would always say to stay away from it because what drives resale value is whether the bag is still enduringly popular and whether people are coming across it often. If you think about the buying patterns of people, it will probably be that they see the bag in store or online, research it, maybe decide that the price is too much for them or they just don't want to spend that money on that bag at that time. And then they'll go on a resale website to try and find a better deal on one. But if that bag isn't available anymore, you can't do that, which means that demand drops, which means that the price you'll be able to command for it is a lot less. There are very few exceptions to this, and so always if you are looking at a bag that's being discontinued, I would definitely say to wait, and even look at buying on the pre-loved market as well, because usually speaking, its value will not hold. I would say though that this discontinued style rule applies to every single brand out there, so it's definitely not just Louis Vuitton, and usually the exact same pattern happens in that the brand will announce it's discontinuing a particular style, there will be a surge of interest around that style, and there will be a lot of hype, and sometimes even prices on the resale market will go up, but after that certain period of time, you know, six or maybe 12 months later, interest will begin to drop and that means prices will drop as well. And unless that brand then re-releases the bag or does something else to it, interest will continue to drop as will the price as well. I've seen that happen so many different times. So if it is a discontinued style and you know it's a discontinued style and you are concerned about resale value, I definitely think twice about buying it or again, look for it on the resale market in a few months time where you will be able to get a much better deal.
For my next category, I wanted to talk about not it bags. So I am also going to be talking about it bags as well, but for this category and by far a worse offender than an it bag is a not it bag. And <laughs> what I mean by this is basically the other styles that a bag brand may produce, just like seasonal styles from Chanel, but every single brand will do a variation of this. So I'm going to use Fendi as an example here, but if you go on the Fendi website, which I'm on right now, and you look at their bags. So at the top of the list, they will have their peekaboo and also their newly released baguette bags. Those are definitely their it bags at the moment. They're their best sellers. I'm not sure how well the baguette line is gonna do. I imagine it's going to do pretty well though. But if you look at their different bag styles, they actually have a ton of different ones that they do. Everything from the can eye bag, if that's how you say it, um, to wallets on a chain, to belt bags, they do bucket bags, they do their by the way bag. They do a whole host of different bag styles. And I would say almost <laughs> unanimously, these are not going to do that well on the resale market in about five years time. They may be doing okay now, but even then they're not super popular styles. So I don't imagine you'll be able to get all of your money back, but certainly these aren't considered classic styles. And so I don't think that they're gonna do that well. And even their kind of more it style bags, such as the peekaboo, even then they don't have amazing resale value. But definitely what is a worse offender are styles which they do still release, and they have done for a couple of seasons now, but which don't have the same amount of hype. So again, if you're looking at anything other than the super popular styles from any given bag brand, you can pretty much guarantee that they aren't going to have amazing resale value. And now I wanted to talk about it bags. Now, what I mean by an it bag is a bag of the moment that is super popular in that particular period of time. You can find many examples of this, but a good example right now is the Marmot bag. Now, there will be differing opinions on how popular this still is, but by all means, Gucci is becoming an incredibly popular luxury brand, even more so than it was before, and it definitely still seems to be building on its success of the Marmot line. But I still absolutely do consider this to be an it bag. I don't think it's going to have amazing resale value in 10 years time. I don't know that for sure and I don't think anyone does without having a crystal ball and looking into the future and this could very well be the next Chanel classic flap. I don't know but if I had to put my money either way I would say that it definitely has a few more good years left in it but I don't think this is going to be a classic that's still going to look in style and command good resale value in 10 years time and typically that's going to be true of all it bags and a good brand example of this is Chloe who are very famous for consistently producing beautiful bags which are super popular when they're released they could definitely be considered it bags but after a few years the popularity definitely dips and they will eventually stop producing that bag so a good example of this is the Paddington they've done it with the Drew the Nile at the moment they have so many different styles of bags that they have produced and they've always become very popular but then after that initial period of popularity again demand for it does drop and they will eventually stop producing it which really does affect the resale value as I mentioned previously. So Chloe is definitely one where they have beautiful bags but is definitely not a brand to look at if you really are concerned with the resale value. What's interesting about it bags though is the amount of time that any given bag is popular and this really does seem to vary from bag to bag. So for example the JW Anson bag which was all over Instagram a few seasons ago was popular pretty much for only one or two seasons whereas there are some other it bags which last for many years and again I think the Marmont is a good example of that. This has already been out for a couple of years now now and it's still very popular. I still do think it will continue to be popular for at least another couple of years. I think the Givenchy Antigona is another good example of that and the Antigona doesn't have amazing resale value but it still does okay and demand for it is still very high so they keep producing the bag. But again, it's been around for many, many years. So it does depend on the bag style. Some will literally only last a season or two. Others have five, maybe even 10 years in them. So you have to be aware of kind of what's happening in the market. But the most crucial thing about resale value with it bags is the timing. If you did want to buy an it bag, but you were concerned about resale value, then it's fully possible to buy it, use it for six, maybe 12 months, and still sell it and regain most of your money back if you sell it while it's still popular. So that is definitely a formula that some people do and they're happy to do. 
I don't tend to do that just because I like to have my bags for longer than that, but if you wanted to do it, you definitely could, and the only thing you have to keep in mind is making sure you get that timing right so that you sell while it's still popular so you do get the best price possible for it. And then finally, I wanted to mention contemporary line bags. Now, what I mean by a contemporary line bag is a bag from a line that is considered contemporary. And by that, I mean Marc Jacobs, Tory Burch, Rebecca Minkoff. Those kind of brands are all considered contemporary and they all release bags, which all usually do pretty badly on the resale market. There are some bags that do better than others, but usually speaking, they won't do that well. And that's usually due to the fact that they don't tend to have classic models that they re-release on a yearly basis. And also you can usually find them on sale as well, which is never a good thing for resale value. So if you're looking for a bag that is going to last really well and have amazing resale value, contemporary line bags definitely aren't the one, but contemporary line bags are really great for having a more accessible price point. If you did want to buy one though, I would always say to wait for a sale or otherwise buy pre-love because you can pick up absolutely amazing bargains, but I would never really advise to buy a contemporary line bag full price because you could start to lose a fair bit of money. So that is my list of the worst offenders and if you're thinking that I pretty much mentioned every single bag out there except for maybe three bags, you're right. And that is because the vast majority of bags do not hold their value well and it is a bit of a myth in the luxury bag world that a lot of bag brands do hold their value really well because it's just not true. Of all the bags I can think of that really truly hold their value, I can think of five and that is the Chanel Classic Flap, the Hermes Birkin, the Kelly, and maybe the Louis Vuitton Speedy and the Neverfull. And apart from that, I really can't think of any bags that really do have great resale value to the extent where if you wanted to buy one and then use it and then sell it in five years time, you could still get your money back. That hardly applies to any bag brands. And so unless you're interested in buying those very particular bag styles, I wouldn't really get too hung up on resale value. And again, what I mentioned earlier is just to buy what you love. It is a sliding scale, of course, and that's kind of what I touched upon with my it bag narrative, which is it is still possible to buy and sell as long as it's within a certain time frame and still recoup quite a bit of your money back. And one more thing that I wanted to mention is that just because a bag doesn't have a good resale value, and as I mentioned, hardly any bags do have 100% resale value, it doesn't mean that it's not a good classic bag that you'll be able to wear for many years. It does stand true that all of the bags I mentioned that do have really good resale value do still look very current and fashionable and all that kind of stuff but there are plenty of bags which don't have 100% resale value but you still will be able to wear it for many years and it'll still look very in fashion all that kind of stuff there are many bag brands that do this Dior is one of them, Celine is another which have many beautiful styles which I still think look very current and beautiful. Mulberry is another example of this. You definitely don't only have to buy those five bags if you want a beautiful classic handbag. You just have to adjust yourself to the fact that they may not have 100% resale value. If you're interested in learning more about the bag brands which I think have very classic models, then I do have a whole blog post on this. So I will leave that down below in the description section if you're interested in checking that out. I list all the models from my favorite brands which I think are very classic. And again, they may not have incredible resale value, but they still definitely will look the part for many years. And finally, I wanted to leave you with a little buying guide. So if you weren't interested in buying those five bags that I mentioned, but you still wanted a bit of a guide as to what makes the best purchase, then I do have four points to consider if you are thinking about buying a luxury bag and you do care about resale value. So the first one is if the bag brand has sales frequently and if they discount heavily. This is never a good sign for resale value if the bag brand discounts a lot because it means that demand is slowing down and they have to do that. So that's always something to keep in mind. Gucci is a very fine example of a bag brand that is doing increasingly well on the resale market and they have recently stopped doing sales. They used to do sales on a semi-annual basis, I think. They always used to discount their kind of lowest performing models 
and they stopped doing that completely. So you won't ever find a Gucci sale anymore, at least not an official Gucci one, because they put a ban on all sales. So if they're doing that, that's a good sign in terms of resale value. Whereas if a bad brand is discounting a lot, that is a bad sign. The second thing to consider is if a brand continues to change its logo a lot, which is never a good sign. Once is totally fine, but if they continue to go through a lot of turmoil and change, that usually isn't a good thing for the brand's resale value. So a good example of a brand not doing that is the Saint Laurent brand. Saint Laurent has obviously gone through a lot of changes, including changing their name to Saint Laurent. But even though they did that, they still kept their very iconic YSL logo the same, and they still continue to use it, which means that the resale value is really protected. Again, it's not 100%, but it still does a lot better than a lot of other brands. And it's because they kept a level of consistency in their bag style. So definitely something to consider if a bag brand changes its logo every year or every couple of years, that's definitely a warning sign. The third thing to consider is if it's going to be a discontinued style. This is what I mentioned earlier, but if you hear about something being a discontinued style, I would definitely say to not buy it unless you're absolutely in love with the bag and have no intention of reselling it or otherwise if you're looking to buy it on the pre-love market. But if you're buying something for resale value, then definitely stay away from discontinued models. And finally, for my last point to consider is the actual shape and style of the bag. There are some shapes that are just enduringly popular and as a result will do much better on the resale market. Here I'm thinking of things like the camera bag, which is released by pretty much every major bag brand out there because it is so popular. Another good example of this is also the tote bag as well. And one particular example is the Chanel vintage tote bags. Chanel vintage bags tend to do better than most anyway, but their vintage tote bags always do very well. A lot of these were carried by the likes of Nicole Richie a few years ago, but they are very, very popular still because one, it's a very, very iconic shape and something that's so useful and functional as well. And also Chanel are obviously very good at protecting their brand identity and their logo also. Combined means that Chanel vintage totes are still very, very popular whenever they do appear on the resale market. So. Definitely something to consider is the shape and style of the bag. So that is it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions for me, then leave them down below. If you enjoyed the video, please do give this a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe. I would love to have you here. Thank you so much for watching guys. I will see you in my next one. Bye.